Beautiful. Okay, so as always, we'll just kind of just start with the spine first, um, but we will need a towel and some sort of cushion because we're going to get into the quad a little bit differently to couch stretch, something we actually did last week. Okay, so that's something to look forward to. But if we're good, let's stand up on our feet. Let me just quickly start my timer. That way I'm on track. And then what we're going to do here, guys, is simply take a wide step. No need to set a PB, but toes are face forward. Quads are nice and firm. And we're just going to kind of go into a little spinal roll. Okay, so effectively, we're going to tuck our chin onto the chest, slowly round the upper back, making our way down towards the ground. Now, whether you touch the ground or not, that doesn't matter. Let's think about softening the spine. And at the bottom, wherever that may be for you, you're going to take two breaths in and out. And it's slowly making your weight back up. Okay, we're just going to continue to do this. When we do get to the bottom, when we are looking to kind of breathe, let's see if we can keep it nasal breathing. It's going to be soft, it's going to be long, it's going to be slow. Okay, just like that spinal roll. So again, the movement itself is super slow, it's controlled. Slowly rolling back to the top. Let's get one more in there. Okay, make sure you're not rushing. Okay, slowly making our way up top. We'll bring our legs in, okay? Roughly give or take under the hips. And then from there, we're gonna just soften the knees a little bit, basically bend the knees. Now from here on, the easiest way to kind of do this is probably put your hands on top of your thighs. We're gonna do that same thing again. We're gonna tuck our chin onto the chest, but this time we're gonna just look to kind of move everything above the mid back, okay? So everything above the rib cage or the rib cage itself. We're not trying to round the lower back. We're gonna try, Tuck our chin in, spread the shoulder blades, come as low, slide our hands as low as possible, and then slowly extend the upper back. Then the chin is elastic to come up. And let's repeat that process again. So slowly tuck the chin onto the chest. As you do this, feel it through the back of the neck. Slowly round the upper back, start to spread the shoulder blades. Draw that sternum, the middle of your chest, middle of your heart, to the back wall. And slowly lift, okay? And start to move exactly where you were rounded. So we'll just repeat this process a couple more times. And really bring the attention to the upper to mid back. Okay, so remembering what that feels like, all we're gonna do is a little bit like Simon says, okay, we're gonna take our left leg straight across our right. So right leg is the working leg, which happens to be behind us. That right leg is also straight at all times. The front left leg is soft and it can basically be placed any way that you want to, that's gonna keep you nice and sturdy, okay? So the back leg, the right leg is the working leg. We're gonna put that right hand behind our right head. And then we're gonna just allow the left hand to drop by our side. And we're going to drop that shoulder, the left shoulder, drop the head to the left side and slowly just reach. When I say reach, I like to drop. Okay, just kind of feel that out a little bit, that side body. 
okay, because the back leg is straight, you may feel this on the outside of your hips a little bit as well. And we're gonna slowly bring yourself upright again. We'll do the same thing and a little bit like last week again, this time we're gonna change angles a little bit. So maybe you kind of fall forwards a little bit with that shoulder, the left shoulder, right? So as you come down, okay, you create an angle essentially a little bit. And you may feel this stretch or load inside a different portion of that oblique, okay? Then use your breath to soften at the bottom rather than forcing anything. And slowly back it up. And the last angle would be taking that, okay, again, the left shoulder back behind it ever so slightly, okay? And then dropping to the side. Now this may get into the QL, the low back region a little bit more, okay? Or the front of the hips a little bit more. Slowly back it up. Let's go to the other side. Okay, so we'll take that right leg across the left. Left leg is a working leg, so left hand will come by the left side of the head. We'll drop the right hand to the right side. Allow the weight of the head to get involved as well. So just soften everything up. We'll just spend a second or two here just using our breath to allow ourselves to melt. Now slowly upright. So let's go to that forward trajectory first. So the right shoulder drops forward a little bit as we come down. Slowly upright. The right shoulder goes back a tiny bit. And then we're gonna drop again. And remember these angles that you're just playing with them. You're just seeing what's, what feels good for you. So don't be scared to kind of even move a little bit in this position, you know, forwards or backwards to kind of feel that different sort of tension you can create in the body. And slowly back it up. Okay, so just remembering those angles essentially. So from sideways, you know, basically what we did was we came straight to the side. We also had a little bit of a forward trajectory like this. And then we had a little bit of a back trajectory. And you can hopefully, or hopefully you felt, maybe not, okay? That little bit of loading in different portions of the, the obliques in the QL, the lower back region and the side region, essentially. So just bearing that in mind, let's grab our towels or whatever you are going to be using, okay? You can also use a dowel if you have a dowel, okay? Something solid. So a couple of things with this. We want the hands to be about, you know, double, triple, shoulder width apart, okay? And I want you to think about you're gonna be tearing that towel or a dowel, okay? The reason being for you to tear that out, something has to happen on this region of the shoulders a little bit, okay? So we have to create a little bit of stability through here, which is gonna give us extra tension when you guys have to move. So sticking with that, you know, side bends, your legs may be a little bit wider this time, just because, you know, it will give you a bigger base, so you should be more stable. What we're gonna do is, okay, imagine, Boom, okay, straight up. We're going to lean to the same side. We can start to rotate back or rotate forward a little bit, okay? So those are the kind of three trajectories, if you think about it in a simple thing, or simple way, it's a simple way to think about it. Those three angles is effectively how you wanna enter or exit, okay, as we do this next move called round the world. So round the world is going to be, feet nice and wide, we'll start at the top, we can choose an angle, whether it be boom, 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 wherever it feels good for you. Come down, remember tearing the towel as low as possible. And then we can start to, you know, reach forwards, backwards. Look, I can also kind of move in any trajectory here. Okay, and again, looking to come out, remember, okay, either boom, okay, whatever feels good. And we're gonna just continually go in one direction. So this is not designed to go super fast, you know, no need to set a PB we'll kind of just allow ourselves some time to go each way. So a minute to be particular, we'll go minute in one direction and minute on the other direction. So you know what to do, okay? Do whatever feels good for you, okay? And look to explore this, those different angles essentially. Here we go, three, two, one. So nice controls.
Whew. Last one, and then let's change directions. Last one. And finish. Okay, so from here, quickly, nice and simple, we'll make our way to headquarters. Okay, and keeping it really simple, just sticking with that rotation theme. Again, start maybe kind of small and then build it up. We'll just allow ourselves, again, minute per side. We'll just kind of work with the headquarters. What that means is just moving at the cervical to the neck area. And we'll use the head, okay, as a, as a way to do that. Now, everything below needs to stay still, okay? So effectively, what we're going to do here is chin's going to be tucked into the chest. We're going to slowly, okay, keep our, eye, keep our eyes open. We're going to come down towards the armpit or look down towards the armpit. From there, chin comes over the shoulders, looks back behind. Isaac is up, everything to the front of the neck is felt here. We're gonna rotate back behind us first, over the shoulders, down to the armpit, to the chest, and we'll continue that circle. Okay, so this one thing that I wanted to do from side is this, often with the next circles, what happens is we look down, we do this bit really well, we just do this angle here. Okay, this is what a normal neck circle or head circle looks like for most people. What we want to make sure is we come up, so to the armpit, over the shoulders, and then we want to actually look behind. So we have this extra little rotation, and then that's a key, start opening up things at the front of the neck. Okay, so just pay attention to that. Again, don't do this quick, no need to set a PB, slowly, gradually be progressive, build it bigger and bigger if you can. Okay, so minute per side in three, two, one. Nothing too crazy. Just like any circle, you want to make sure that circle is continuous. Or if you have to pause at any point, that means you're going too hard. Remember, slowly build it up. I find it helps me to keep my eyes open at all times. Halfway. This will be a last one. Once you're ready, let's change direction. Halfway, slow, controlled. Try to be more and more expensive.
Okay, finishing that off, please. Okay, once we're done, what we're gonna do is just kind of make our way on down the stairs a little bit. So before we kind of go into the nitty gritty stuff, just going into a little bit of a hip rotation work. So, or hip and ankle. What we're gonna do here is, okay, feet are gonna to be together. I'm gonna to take it old school. We're gonna place our hands on top of our knees and our knees are gonna be soft, meaning they're gonna be bent. Okay, so from side view or front 45, what I wanna make sure here is your heels are planted onto the ground for the time being. We're going to effectively start in this locked out position. My hips are shot back. Okay, so this is the furthest my hip is gonna be away at any given point. And then I'm gonna soften my knees as much as possible to hit one corner trying to take that knee as far past over my toes as possible without lifting my heels up, okay, hitting that next corner and then boom, coming back to that starting position. So for the time being, just very, very okay, smooth control, just rotation in one direction. Let's just kind of go 30 seconds each way, okay? And we'll do that in three, two, one. So again, no need to rush. We are gonna do a second iteration of this. So all you're trying to do here is get into the really the nooks and cranny, okay, of the hips the knees, the ankles. Okay, so you'll feel your weight being distributed onto the edges of your feet, the heels, the inside outside edges, the front of your feet. Okay, so make sure you're in control at all times. When you're ready, let's change directions. Okay, remember the heel is flat. Obviously the inside outside edges will be lifting off a little bit, which is all good. Making this that last rotation. Boom. Okay, so this time the same thing, but okay, 30 seconds each way, but we're gonna allow our heels to lift off. Now that means we're gonna be able to get a little bit deeper bend at the knees. So again, you're in charge of the intensity, you're in charge of the dosage. Effectively, same thing, obviously legs are locked out. I'm gonna hit that corner as much as possible, but this time as I travel my knees as far over, my heels are gonna be off, find the edges first, and then boom, continue with that circle again. Okay, so 30 seconds per side. Listen to your body. Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, and again, with the circular motion, we want to be smooth. We want to have the same sort of tempo or speed. So if you're having to be really, you know, diligent and, uh, you know, having to slow yourself down and the the heels off, just be mindful, maybe back it off a little bit so you can just keep it at the same pace to start off with. Okay, so don't bend it too much to start off with, just what you can tolerate and sustain. And we'll make this our last circle and then let's go to the opposite direction. Last one. And rest. Okay. Okay. So from here, guys, nice and straightforward. What we're going to do is we've got five movements that we're going to do two times, two sets. Okay. Before we do that, we're going to just kind of get into a little bit of a shoulder work. And again, I say the shoulder work, obviously, as you guys know, if you are not hanging, or doing any pulling type of movement, nothing's really happening at the back of the shoulders, right? So we're not gonna be obviously pulling or anything like that, but I just wanna see, okay, and challenge you guys for a minute per side, okay, I say per side, just in a per direction. We're gonna see what this standing, it's, it's a form of standing meditation, but we're gonna see what the shoulders are doing, okay? So effectively what we're gonna do here before moving, okay, down into the lower body is feet are gonna be, give or take, under your hips, from here, 
hands are by your side. And all we're going to do, okay, from the side view again. So, you know, if you start to do this or this or whatever, you're going to start to feel this and it's going to be harder, okay? I think we should be able to sustain this. We're going to simply just lift our hands by our sides like so, okay? So lifting up, one hand is going to just, boom, relax. The other hand is going to come up, extend. So if we're going to be here for a minute and then we're going to slowly switch, okay, for the next minute. So effectively, we're going to be holding our hands out for two minutes, which sounds very boring. It may be boring to you, but think about this as an opportunity to scan through the body, especially the back of the body, in terms of how you are actually holding these arms out to the side. Now, these are long levers to be holding them out there for that amount of time you may start to kind of feel it's, it's not as easy as it looks, right? So again, check in with the breath, try to keep everything through the nose, okay? Of course, if you need to drop your arm to shake it off, you're more than welcome to, but think about how can you make those micro adjustments and where can you make those micro adjustments, okay? So these are the areas that you wanna bring your attention to, okay? So we're just gonna go for a minute, boom, in each direction, okay? We'll go in four, three, two, one. Arms are by the side, one hand is up, one wrist is extended, one wrist is down. This seems very, very, uh, what's it called? What's the movie? Not Kung Fu Panda. Nah. We'll talk about it at the end. Karate Kid, that's it. Okay, so nice and simple. It also helps to kind of just look at one spot so your neck isn't having to work super hard. You'll see your traps engage quite aggressively here. can help to just close your eyes so you can just kind of feel your body out better. Three, two, one, slowly. Okay, boom, switching the extension and the flexion of the wrist. Staying patient, composed. If your arms are like your shelves, think about where the wall is and how and where you can get that wall to be stronger. Slowly relax. Okay, maybe the delts are on fire, maybe they're not. All good. Hopefully you all survived. So from here, guys, we're gonna go and grab our cushion pillow, yoga blocks, whatever you've got that we need, basically for us to be able to elevate our hips up off the ground, okay? Um, and you know, some of you may actually not even need this, okay? But I'm super tight, so I need it. So effectively what we're gonna do here, guys, is we're gonna to go to our lying quad stretch, okay? And this is something that, you know, kind of, obviously we're gonna hold for a duration, 90 seconds to be exact, minute and a half per side. And, you know, we're gonna go through different phases essentially, okay? So the, you know, first thing this morning, you know, the first 30, 40 seconds may feel already cranked up. So what I would urge you to uh, make sure you do throughout the session today is, Give yourself that, you know, 20 to 30 seconds where you just sit with it, even if it feels really easy, okay? It will build over time. So don't go looking for like that extreme, like sensation of stretch. Just sit with it before you make any adjustments for a little while, 
Okay, so with this, what we're going to do is uh, let me just show you on this side. So effectively, the side we're going to sit on is a straight leg. Okay, and the reason I've got the cushion is I'm literally going to sit on one side, while the other one is going to be bent back behind me. Okay, so obviously you can't see my opposite leg at the moment, but just so you can see my ankles, right? So this is what we need the cushion for. Some of us may need to be a little bit higher, okay, because we're going to be super more restricted and stuff like that. So again, the height of the cushion, the height of, uh, where your hips are supported is critical, okay? From there, if I do this now on the other side, okay, this, the leg that we're sitting on, okay, so think about this again as we're going to try to keep our hips nice and still as possible. You can see, you know, my knees literally can't bend any more than this, right? This is the, the full flexion that I can have. So again, be mindful because as soon as we start to kind of walk or, or, or start to kind of reach back, our spine is going to be acting as a load, okay? So effectively what I want to make sure is my hips are kind of roughly or my, my heels are slightly outside of the butt. From there, I'm going to slowly kind of walk my fingers back and I'm going to just start with this position first. So this is already going to be a stretch for most of us. Okay, and I will talk you through the next steps a little bit. Okay, so if everybody's cool, let's arrive in this position. Okay, and then let me hit the clock. So slowly in four, three, two, one. You're going to simply find your way back. And I find the first thing to kind of just check in is, you know, look down the body and just make sure your hips are nice and square. So often what tends to happen is if you're really uncomfortable, really tight, you start to fall towards one side to avoid okay being in this position if that's the case make yourself a bit more upright okay deload it now for the rest of us think about okay the sideways stretching okay so for me it's my right leg i'm going to tuck my right hip underneath me as well so i'm going to just think about squeezing my buttock to lift the hips up off my heel i'm not actually but i'm just thinking about it so my hips are nice and stable okay so that kind of brings a different sort of intention to the stretch and then obviously I have the option of now slowly walking my hands out a little bit further, okay, back. So my body gets a little bit closer to the ground, which is gonna effectively add to the stretch. So as you can see, I'm speaking. So, you know, we will need to be able to breathe calmly, slowly, okay, and with control throughout this stretch. Now, the only thing with this is as your hands get wider, sometimes you can jam your neck. So be mindful. Okay, so nothing should be through the upper trap. You can slowly even kind of make your way down to the elbows if you, you know, are flexing enough. Keep that hip tucked. I'm gonna slowly somehow walk out, okay? Exit strategy is up to you. Ooh. Okay, bring that limb across. Okay, just give your ankles a twist. Just move things around. Make sure blood's flowing and those limb belong to you again. And then if you're good, we'll start to set ourselves up for the opposite side. So again, you know, we know the other side may not be different. So don't, you know, don't mistake me, force yourself. Try to follow the principles. Okay, so you know, even before we start, let's just kind of you know, get the setup right. Okay, make sure you're comfortable. And then from there, once we're ready, we'll start to make our way back in four, three, two, one. So just kind of find that first position where it's like, yeah, I can sort of kind of feel a stretch, but you know, like, it's nothing too extreme. So just find that place. We'll just kind of hang out here. Allow the body to settle down a little bit. Remember, we can start to look down the body, make sure the hips are nice and square. Okay, we can think about tucking that hips underneath us. And again, that should bring a different element to the stretch. It's just 30 seconds here. So if you were just holding that position, if you want to go a little bit further and make some adjustments, you can. Slowly just be progressive about it, okay? And just, again, making sure you're using breathing as a vehicle to control this stretch. Now, it's, this is kind of a little bit hardcore because obviously your ankles, your shins are also into play here, okay? So, you know, for most of us, it's not just the quads, it's also going to be the laces of our feet, the front of our shin. So just bear with it. This is why, again, 
don't just crank things up, just allow the body to, you know, settle down a little bit. Remember, try to keep the glutes on a little bit. Make sure the hips are nice and square. Slowly, slowly back it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Moving our ankles around. Okay, good people. So we'll kind of go into our towel again. We're going to be laid up on our back and we're going to attack the hamstrings now. I say the hamstrings, but it's really the hip flexor. Okay, so what we're going to do here, again, we've been doing this for a little while, a few weeks at least now. Okay, we're going to go five by five protocol. So a little bit of strength protocol. And what I want to see happen here is we're going to have a towel towards the ball ones of our feet, so towards the top of our feet. And our toes are going to be pointed away at all times. Okay. So that's the setup with the towel and the feet. The spare leg is going to be bent. Okay. And the working leg is also going to start in this bent position. So as most of you know by now, just a little reminder, my cues are going to be three part. I'm going to say straighten. This is where you squeeze the quads. Okay. So just think, don't think about locking the knees out, but think about actually squeezing the quads. From there, I'm going to say pull, which is effectively you're going to use the towel to bring the leg closer to you. Now, that's what's adding to the stretch, right? So you got the quad locking the knees out, and then you got your hamstring or your, uh, your hands helping you to bring the legs back. So that's the pull component. The last one is going to be lift. Now, when I say lift, what I actually mean is lift the towel off a little bit. So power off your hands. And your then goal is to use the stuff in the front of your hips to keep your legs where they were, okay? So again, three part, we're gonna have them bent first. We're going to straighten, pull, and then lift. So if you were to let go of the towel, you're using your strength from the front, okay, of your hips to keep your legs there. Then again, we're gonna bend the legs and then start that process again, okay? We're gonna hold the top position for five seconds, five reps per side, so five by five. Okay, so if everybody's ready, let's get ready. So, towel is of the movements of our feet, toes are pointed away, knees are bent. Here we go. Straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, one. Bend. Straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, Two, bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, three. Bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, four. Bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, Three, two, five, bend and rest. Let's go to the opposite side. Okay, so again, ball once of our feet and bend the knees initially. And here we go. We're going to straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, one, bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, two, bend. Straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, three, bend. Straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, three, bend. Straighten, pull. Lift, five, four, three, two, four, bend. Straighten, pull, lift, five, four, three, two, five, bend. Not sure if that was six, but if it was, you got one free. Okay, so from here, all we're gonna do guys is 
straight go into our shoulders. Okay, again, we're gonna be here for a minute and a half and our objective is pretty straightforward. We're gonna be spending some time in shoulder extension. So for this guy, again, what I wanna to say to you is, closer the hands, the harder it is. Remember the fingers are pointed back behind you, okay? What I wanna see happen here is squeezing the shoulder blades together, lifting the chest up and making sure you're not dumping into your lower back. So you're again, lifting out the lower back, okay? Same thing as a quad stretch. We're gonna walk our hips away, okay? To effectively load the shoulders. Now, the key thing here is for a minute and a half, if we start to slouch, my ears start to come to my shoulders, it's gonna be nasty, not just in your traps, but potentially your elbows as well. So you shouldn't feel anything through the elbows. We should be pushing the ground away, okay? Often we start to feel it in the elbows for two reasons. Either it's hyperextending or we're not stable at the shoulders and the tissues of the, the elbows are quite ready. So they're just overloaded. Either way, back it off a little bit and think about, okay, what can you do from the wall region as opposed to just dumping into your shelves, okay? So if you're good, let's go for a, a minute and a half here. Again, be gradual about it. We'll go in four, three, two, one. So again, just, you know, rather than feeling a massive stretch, be in a position where you feel strong initially. And just like, let's take a moment to kind of hang out here. Think about, can I actually squeeze my shoulder blades to roll my shoulders out so I can feel it through the upper chest region, push my hands into the ground, which may kind of start to load the biceps up a little bit all which is good, nothing cranked to the neck, so my head is looking up to the ceiling potentially, or my eyes at least are. Okay, that's 30 seconds, so if you wanted to make an adjustment, if you wanted to go a little bit further, you can at this point. And again, now we start to connect the whole breath, okay, with the movement. Ease and nowhere near the shoulders. Slow your knees bent and then boom, back it up a little bit. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go back into our trusted towel and we're gonna go into our shoulder flexion. Okay, so effectively, we're gonna be looking to bring our hands over our head in this lying down position. Before we do that, just so everybody's on the same wavelength, okay, over the last couple of weeks, we've been doing those ATYs in our strength and movement sessions to really work the the T1, T2, right? So the trapezius muscles and between your shoulder blades. Effectively, that's what you're gonna be using predominantly here as well, okay? So what I wanna see happen here is my arms are overhead and the cue is gonna be reach. Reach is the elevation of the shoulder blade. So I'm reaching up and then I'm gonna be using the stuff in between my shoulder blades to lift my hands up off the ground, okay? So you can see my hands are trying to come behind my ears a little bit. A couple of things from the front, being really mindful that elevation is here, as opposed to just shrugging, okay? So you don't wanna feel anything through this region of the neck whatsoever, but rather round your armpits and obviously in between the shoulder blades, that's your goal. It really helps to, again, try tear the towel up. So you already are in this position here. So when you okay, lift, you're already you know, in a solid position from here. So you shouldn't feel things through the, the middle of your shoulder blades, okay? Again, we're gonna be doing this for five reps with a five second hold at the top position. Okay, so if everybody's good to go, we're gonna simply just lie onto the ground. Hands, again, they're gonna be slightly different for different people, but let's say as a general rule, we're gonna have it just outside the shoulder, okay, width. The tighter you are, the wider you may need to go, okay? From here, everything's relaxed. Forehead is lightly touching the ground, so no tattoos on your forehead, okay? From here, let's elevate the shoulders, or let's punch, and then lift. Five, four. Three, two, one, down, punch, lift, five, four, three, two, two, down, punch, lift, five, 
four, three, two, three, down. Punch, lift, five, four, three, two, four, down. Punch, lift, five, four, three, two, five, down. And rest. Okay, so from there, the last little bit we're gonna go into is a straightforward, a half lotus. So effectively guys, we're gonna be sit down like this. Okay, so folded legs like this. Uh, and if you find sitting on the ground is really hard, so meaning from the side, if you're not doing one of these already, pop something okay, below your backside. So like the cushion we used earlier on to raise the hips up, okay? But otherwise, guys, what we're going to do here is we're going to place one leg on the outside, okay, on top of the opposite knee, sorry, okay? So my ankle, okay, on top of the knee, like so. You can see the leg that's on top, the knees are up, okay? And that's because something, okay, something's happening on the outside of my hips here. So rather than kind of focusing on this top knee and trying to push it down and trying to crank it up, what we're going to focus is on actually the bottom leg, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go for a minute, of this, okay? And what I want you to do is, I want you to, whatever side is the bottom leg, you're gonna put that hand onto the ground and you're free to move that hand wherever you need to, okay? To support yourself better. The spare hand, okay, is gonna just rest on top of that top knee, okay? But effectively keeping the spine as tall as possible, I'm going to fall forward. That's the goal, okay? So if I do this from the side view, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better, okay? But let's do this all together in four, three, two, so we're going to get the spine tall and we're going to just fall forward a little bit, that's all. Now, yes, you're going to definitely feel things through the top leg a little bit, but let's bring that attention to the bottom leg. Can we push that shin and the feet into the ground as hard as possible? Okay, so keep pushing that bottom leg into the ground as hard as possible. Spine is still tall. Now let's relax that bottom leg a little bit. Maybe we can push up a little bit more and now move our hands to hinge forward a little bit. Okay, so we can make those micro adjustments. So let's do that again. So push the bottom leg down. Posturing up at all times. Okay, so I'm still long. And then relax the bottom leg. And then maybe I can lean forward a little bit. Okay, this is yielding quite well for me today. Okay, so again, my posture's big. Maybe both my hands are forward now. Okay, onto the ground. Last time, again, I'm going to think about pushing my bottom leg down as much as possible, as hard as possible. Keeping my spine nice and elongated. So I'm just hinging at the hips or moving at the crease of the hips. I'm going to relax the bottom leg. And for one last time, I'm just going to reach forward with my heart and slowly back it up. Okay. Boom. Okay, shake it off. If that's good, let's go to the opposite side. Boom. Okay. This is a different story. Look at that height, huh? Oh, God. Different leg. Okay, so again, don't force anything aesthetically here. So you can see, okay, this is at least twice as high as the other opposite side, but I'm going to follow the same principle. So focus on the bottom leg, okay? Support yourself on the outside hand if you need to. We'll go in three, two, one. So the spine is long first, that's the priority. I'm going to hinge forward at the hips ever so slightly, and that's plenty for me for this one. I'm going to look to smash that bottom leg into the ground while also obviously lifting my spine or my chest up. I'm gonna relax that bottom leg. And hopefully my body allows me to yield or kind of move forward a little bit. Again, don't force anything, don't expect anything, just guide the body. Here we go, push that leg down. And then relax that leg. Again, start that work all over again when you're ready. So you're pushing that bottom leg into the ground, so the shins, the thighs, okay? Now relax that leg, obviously, when you need to. Keep that spine big. And slowly backing it off. Whoa. Okay. All right, so. What we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to kind of run through all of those things, okay, simultaneously, okay? So it's still going to hold it for the same amount of time. 
so we don't rush the work okay we say still pay the same attention to the work but this time we should be a little bit more aware okay our body should already sort of kind of have an understanding of what we're trying to achieve okay and our attention is just on doing it better okay so we're going to go into our line quad stretch first but choose a side okay you're going to remember sit down okay on that cushion with one butt okay the leg the front leg from there if everybody's ready we'll start to walk our hands back in four three two one so again same rules come back to wherever you feel that little bit of a mild stretch nothing too crazy opportunity for us to make sure looking down the body keeping the hips nice and square okay maybe tucking the butt and starting to think about how can i positionally okay or, or am i in a position to load the right structures and can i actually sustain that work okay in that position if the answer is yes and you want to obviously go a little bit more you can start to adjust just micro adjustments nothing drastic and again using your breath to tap into the whole thing Make sure your butt's trying to tuck a little bit, okay? So that hip is stable on the stretching side. Sun is light in my eye. Maybe this eventually actually turns into a lying quad stretch. It's the first time it's happened to me. Okay, this has never happened. We're done. Slowly back out of it. Okay. That has never happened to me. I actually hit the ground. Well, me, let's go on to the other side. Let's see how good the other side is. So again, our setup is really critical, okay? Because obviously it dictates our position and that's gonna dictate what structures we load. So be really intentful here, okay? And follow the principles rather than aesthetically force yourself because there's nothing worse than cranking shit up and pissing things off. So from here, once we're ready, if everybody's ready, okay? Four seconds to start to walk a hand. And just find that first point and just settle down here. Just give your body plenty of opportunity you know, and this is kind of, you know, not super loaded. So that means you can also then make those small refinements if you need to. When you look down the body, okay, when you turn the hips on a little bit better, and if all those things are adhered to better, then that's when you can start to, okay, where can I go a little bit? And again, then using your breath, okay. Your force just guide, okay? So you're a guide here. Use your breath. Okay, slowly backing it off. Oh yeah, shins. Woo. Okay, so from here, let's get busy with the hamstrings. Okay, so we'll need a towel for this. We're gonna be laid up on our back. You guys know what we're doing. Five by five seconds per side. One key thing I wanna to say to you is, look at your toes when you're holding it for that five seconds and really think about, can you close the gap between your stomach, your lower stomach and your thighs, the top of your thighs, okay? 
Here we go. So both need that bend to start off with. Okay. Oops. No. Here we go. Okay. The towel is in the top end of your feet, so the bullments of your feet. And here we go. We're gonna straighten, pull, lift for five, four, three, two, one. Bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, two. Bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, three. Bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, four. Bend, straighten. Pull five, four, three, two, five. Bend and rest. Let's go to the opposite side. Maybe I'm counting these five seconds too quick, huh? Here we go. Bend the knees, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, one. Bend, straighten, Pull, five, four, three, two, two. Bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, three. Bend, straighten, pull, lift. Five, four, three, two, four. Bend, straighten, pull, Lift, five, four, three, two, boom, bend, and rest. Okay, from here we'll go straight into our tabletop. Oh, it's another tabletop, shoulder extension, okay? And this is, again, minute and a half, which is a long time. So remember, slowly, gradually walking your hips forward, but keeping your shoulders stable. Hands back behind you. We'll start the walk in four. Three, two, one. So just so you're aware, if this is too much, you obviously can keep in these bent as well, guys. Okay. But otherwise, I like to have my legs flattened out a little bit. Then I can think about what my spine is doing. And again, wherever that, you can make that refinement, so you can scoot that butt out a little bit, okay? If you need to, remember, we need to be able to, we need to have the stretch tolerance here. That's part of the thing we're doing here, okay? So make sure we are able to sustain the work. Okay, bring your attention to the middle of the shoulder blades. Can you squeeze them? Top of your hands, can you push your okay, hands into the ground to lift the chest up high? Lift out of the lower back, so you're not dumping into the spine. And then again, where is your breath? What is it doing? Slowly bend the knees and let's bring it back. Woo. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Okay. So from here, shoulder flexion, okay, using the towel. So when I say punch guys, make sure the wrist is straight as well. Okay, so often what happens from the front on, hopefully you can see my black t-shirt. Okay, often what tends to happen is we start to curl the wrist back because we think that's gonna give us that extra height. Uh -uh. Okay, so make sure wrist is straight, we punch, to elevate the shoulders and then boom, lift. Okay, here we go. Five, and by five seconds here as well, please. Onto our front. Okay. Forehead lightly touching the ground. We're gonna wrap the armpits, punch, then lift. Five, four, three, two, one. Down. Punch, lift. Five, four, three, Two, two, down, 
punch. Lift, five, four, three, two, three. Down, punch. Lift, five, four, three, two, four. Down, punch. Lift, five, four, three, two, five. Down. Ooh, and rest. Okay. Okay. Last little bit. Okay. Our half lotus minute per side. Okay. So I'm going to start with my left left side. Okay. So my left leg or left feet is going to be on top. The foot is going to be on top of my right knee, posturing up. This is a little bit better than last time, which is good. Okay, so again, my job is to make sure my spine is elongated. So I'm lifting, okay, to the ceiling. From here, hands, okay, where I need my, okay, where I need the support. Posture up. We're going to hinge forward of the hips. And then let's smash the bottom leg down. And this time you can start to think about what the top knee is doing as well. Okay, so think about pushing yourself or pushing your feet into the ground as you keep your spine nice and elongated. And then you can relax the legs, but then think about is your spine, okay, long and hinging forward. Again, think about the legs. When you relax the leg, think about it again, is your posture as upright as possible. And again, let's smash the legs. And then relax the legs. We're going to posture up this time. So sitting as upright as possible for the remainder of the time. And we're just going to breathe. Nothing crazy. Try to relax the legs as much as possible. Spine is still nice and elongated. And then slowly move back out of it. Okay. So from here, we'll go to the opposite side. Okay, so again, toes are curled up towards the shin, by the way. Okay, so, you know, posturing up. We'll go in five, four, three, nice and tall spine, hinge of the spine first, and let's start to smash that leg into the ground. The bottom leg in particular, but you can start to bring your attention to this top leg as well now. Okay, you can also use the hips, hopefully, to pull the knees without having to push through your hands. As you relax the legs, we can think about, can we keep that hinge forward a little bit? That's gonna keep the hips loaded, okay? Spine is nice and elongated at all times. Again, smash the leg down nice and hard. Posture. Relaxing the legs, think about the posture again, just hinging forward, using your hands wherever it needs to be. Let's go one more time, just smashing that. And then posture up, nice and tall. Okay, legs are relaxing as much as possible. And then slowly boat back out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And voila, that is it. Okay, come on over, let's have a chat. How's everybody feeling? We're good? Oh, like the old man that I am. Oh. There's always somebody, I'm old, I'm tired, I'm this and that. 